Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, this is how to worship Allah Azza wa Jal without moving your body or your tongue. How do you do that? Well, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us and the Quran even teaches us how to do this. So the Quran says that there are a set of people who are the, the cleverest people, the most intelligent people you can get. Allah calls them the ulul albab, the people of great deep thought. Okay, so Allah Azza wa Jal He explains these people in Surah Ali Imran, Surah number three, and this is verse number one nine zero. And Allah says, "Inna samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilafil layli wa nahari la ayat li ulul albab." That there are many signs uh, Allah has kept. Uh, in the heavens and the earth for those people who with deep understanding and who are those people with deep understanding Allah says Alladheena yathkuruna allaha qiyama wa qu'uda wa ala junubihim those people who remember Allah standing, sitting and on their sides wa yatafakkaruna fi khalqi samawati wal ard and what they do is that they start thinking about the heavens and the earth about how Allah has created the heavens and the earth now this is the ibadah this is how you get the ibadah which is you're not moving your tongue, you're not moving your body, you're not doing anything at all. Imagine you're just sitting down, all you're doing is just relaxing. And as you relax, whether you're relaxing, lying down, whether you're doing is sitting down, or whether you're just standing up, this is what you do. Allah says, fi samawati wal ard, that They start to think about how Allah Azza wa has created the heaven and the earth. Now if you think about it, if you think about how Allah has put all of this together, it's amazing because Nothing is there without a purpose. Okay, you just look out. You see the you see the clouds. There's no way the clouds are there without a purpose. They're there to act. You know, the, the rain that's going to come down on you. You're going to drink that rain. It gives you life. You the wind. It it you know gives life to humans. Without the wind, we'd be dead. Without that fresh air, and without air circulating, we'd actually be dead with many different viruses and other things that would be around. And if you look at the earth. It's there for a purpose. You look at the, the way it's been created, how Allah Azza wa has made it for us to walk on. It's flat, yet, it, yet it's round. One of, the, one of the key words Allah used in the whole Quran was dahaha, which means flat and round at the same time. Now think about every single part of the, of, the, of the existence of this whole of the earth, including the planets, the orbit, the sun, the, the stars. And how Allah has made it so magnificent that not even a single star in the whole of the universe is actually clashing with another star. He has just made them float in their own orbit. And Allah has said that in the whole Quran, Kullun fi falakin yasbahun. Everything floats in its own orbit. Everything swims in its own orbit. Now, the human being itself, if you, if you think about how wonderfully Allah has created us, how amazing our bodies are, how it repairs itself, how it has veins inside it that carry the blood vessels around to keep every single part of it alive and how Allah has created us with lungs that take air inside the heart itself every part of it has a purpose and just this just the fact that you're doing this with me and you're relating it back to Allah is ibadah it's worship when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to wake up early in the morning first thing he used to do is he used to recite these verses and when you think about the purpose of everything then you come to the next part, which Allah has mentioned in the ayah, which is Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila, ma our Lord, you have not created any of this without a purpose. None of this is without a purpose. All of it has got a real, real purpose to it. And when you think about all of that, if it's got a purpose to it, then we come to the Quran and we come to Revelation. Revelation, you know, didn't just come up like that. Allah Azza wa Jal told us about that all in the revelation and that revelation tells us the, the wahi and the revelation that came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi tells us about the afterlife it tells us about the, um, the, the about Jannah, Jahannam it tells about a resurrection it tells us about if there's a purpose think about it look if there's a purpose of life what is the purpose of the human being the purpose of the human being is that Allah is now judging us and he's testing us of how we are in life and of course, we're going to have good deeds and bad deeds. And if you have good deeds and bad deeds, either you go to Jannah or you go to Jahannam. And that's why we say, Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batula subhanak. We say, Oh Allah, you are completely free of all, 
all deficiencies. You have no fault with you. We have fault. And since we have fault, we can face the fire. That's why we say, Fatina Ada Banar, save us from the punishment of the fire. Okay, that's the next part of the verse. Think about how we started up just thinking of, of the cone and existence, and from there we get to the judgment and then about fire, and then we say, oh Allah, save us from the fire. We're still thinking about Allah Azza wa Jal. Rabbana inna kaman tudkhil nar faqad Oh Allah, oh our Lord, whoever you have entered into the fire and you have thrown, thrown them into the fire, then you have surely disgraced them. And they are definitely wrongdoers. They deserve to go there. Since they are wrongdoers, wrongdoers have no helpers. They would have no helpers in the next, in the next life. Rabbana, O our Lord. Now, since we understand all of this, now we come to the next part. Rabbana, O our Lord. We heard someone calling us to Islam. Whoever that was, our parents, our forefathers, our teachers, it could be a revert to Islam, he had a da'i or she had a da'i, somebody called them to Islam. We heard someone call us to Islam, uh, to, towards Iman and belief. And fa'aman, we believed. So we're asking you to forgive us. We believe. And aminu bi rabbikum fa'amana. They said, believe in your Lord and we believed in our Lord. Oh Allah, the purpose of all of this is that we've now believed in you. We're still thinking about Allah. Just thinking about Allah. I think all of this is ibadah. Rabbana faghfir lana. Oh, oh our Lord, forgive us. Zunubana, forgive our sins. Wa kafir anna sayyatina. Remove our troubles from us. Wa tawafana ma'al abrar. And when it's time for us to go, make us go amongst those people who are the righteous, most righteous. Rabbana, uh, oh our Lord, okay? we want you to give us this. Ma wa'attana ala rusulik. Oh Allah, whatever you've promised for your prophets, we want that for us. That's the best dua. Because your prophets are those that you're not going to disgrace. Okay, So we want that. And we want you to give us the same as what you give your prophets. And whatever you promise them, give us that promise. Innaka la al-mi'ad. You will never go against your promise. Now, it is obviously a dua. But look how the thought of starting has ended with all of this. In the Quran, verse number 190 of surah number 3. And you see that, subhanallah, oh Allah said this is ibadah. Just the thought of it is ibadah. Now you're here in Ramadan and you're going to now you know go across and you can do this out of, outside of Ramadan it's not just Ramadan if you want to just sit down and just think about what I've just said this is Ibadah this is a huge Ibadah it is better than just moving your tongue and not using your mind of thinking about Allah Azza wa Jal. and I'm asking you to use this and inshallah bi'idnillah you will get closer you will feel closer to Allah Azza wa Jal just by thinking about what Allah Azza wa Jal has created out there and how he's created us and his whole system you think that this is this this is not just a game this is not a pastime there's some real real purpose to this and I'm part of the purpose and I'm heading towards that towards the akhirah and I will get judged and I better start asking for forgiveness right now and saying to Allah save me from the, the, save me from hellfire now Fikr, just thinking as ibadah, remember this. And I want you to do a lot of this, inshallah. And the dua app that we're creating, inshallah, it's going to it's got this ayat inside it. It's got this whole thing about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saying this in the first thing in the morning. It's encouraging people to actually use their mind just to think about Allah Azza wa Jal. And by donating, my brothers and sisters, you will you will inshallah encourage all of that. Allah will give you plentiful, inshallah, in return. And I want to say this to you that. No sadaqa ever decreases wealth. Please remember this. No sadaqa, no charity that you will ever give will ever decrease your wealth. This is a true statement of the Prophet in a sahih hadith. Okay? He said this over and over again and he's encouraged us. In fact, he said it to Bilal who had no money. He said, oh Bilal, spend and don't, don't ever think anything less from the one who holds the throne. Don't think that he's going to have any less. So, uh, or he's going to, you know, don't fear poverty from him. And that means, my brothers and sisters, whoever has donated already, Jazakumullah Khair, and whoever is willing to do that, please click the button right now in the title. You will find the link. Read the story, click the button, donate right now, and 
and make this your sadaqah jariya, your wealth will not decrease. In fact, whatever you give will be 70 times the amount right now in Ramadan. May Allah Azza wa give us all tawfiq for this. I pray and my deepest prayers are there for all people who have donated so far. May Allah Azza wa remove your troubles. May He forgive your sins. May He raise your status in this world and the next. May He give you relief from all your troubles. May He fulfill your lawful desires. May He remove your, remove your pains from your bodies. May He cure the people who are beloved to you. May He give you in return of whatever, you, you, whatever you're doing. May He give you a lot of good deeds for the Day of Judgment. May He give you nothing less than Jannah to fill those. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.